this piece, I guess we'll get started. Any, um, so this piece, um, as I'm looking at this, um, I feel like, you know, I really want to feel like I'm under the water and swimming in this, but I feel like there's, um, there's a little problem with the, the color harmony in here to make it feel like um, it is underwater. I think the separation right here of this line um, with the, you know, the warm colored sand and then all the blue water, um, they really should be more coordinated in color. So the watercolor really should be impacting this sand and it should have a blue cast. And even if it's a sort of a yellowy sand or warm sand, you know, it would even cast um, the blue and that color would turn kind of greenish, it would be a greenish brown blue. So I feel like there's just a little discord in that color harmony. Um, I like that there's a lot of action in this painting. Um, a lot of movement with the fish and uh, where they're all coming in from different directions. I think that that's really fun and a good variation going on. Um, and there's some good form on all on the fish and on the shark, but I feel like a little bit like the um, the swimmer is sort of a little bit flat. I feel like um, it needs a little bit of highlighting on part of the body, like on the head or the legs. Um, this is a really high contrast area, this dark against this light. And it's like an area you wouldn't want to pay any attention to down at the bottom. So I really should go much lighter on this or this and this a little darker, maybe a little fuzzy edge. So you don't get hung up on a spot like that, that, you know, it's not where you want to be looking or sending your viewer. So um, I think otherwise the viewer really does stay nicely up here by the shark's face for the feeding. And um, yeah, I think it's really fun. Yeah, I think nice job. Yeah. You can ask the person who's here with the painting what they were thinking when they were, you know, what, what made them want to do this painting. Okay, great. Just to make it all more personal. Okay, thank you. Good. Is it good for you? It's good out there. Okay. So, um, could I ask who's painting this is, or are they here? Okay. Okay. So, um, on this painting. I feel like uh, it's really got a nice atmosphere, good feeling of how, how the plane is drawn and painted. I feel like you, it's very three-dimensional. And um, I really love the transition of the, the colors in the sky going from the top to the bottom, the dark blue down to middle values, down to you know just a nice little low sweep of clouds. But I think um, I keep coming back to this shape of the top cloud and feel like it would be nice if it was really even softer and a little more billowy. Um, most of the time, if you keep in mind on clouds, the underside of the cloud can really be very soft and more flat generally and sort of disappears. So you pay attention to the top part of the cloud, but even on the top part, you want to be careful of so many of the same kind of little dips and shapes and hard edges. You want to break that up with a lot of soft edges, a hard edge, soft edge, you know, and really play with that. It's like a perfect thing to play with in a painting where you can give it a lot of expression and have fun with brushwork 
and not get too static with something really stiff when you've got this fluid thing, fluidness sort of that happens in this whole sky with the movement of this plane. So I think that would be the thing that I would suggest maybe to play with even a little more. You know, maybe not connect the whole thing. Maybe do a break in there and just play with the way the, the movement of that would could be a little more natural. Okay? okay. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I should, um, is there names on that bottom sheet? Three. Val? Okay. Is it? It's my old mailbox. It's changed now. Well, I figured it was probably crooked and leaning. Actually, like... that's my neighbor's mailbox. It's the one that's laying on mine. Oh. Well, it has, it's nicely painted. I mean, it feels like it feels cold and it feels so wintry. I think it's a nice job of handling snow. Um, with the shadows, you know how much shadow color is reflecting into snow. Um, and also just a good pattern of how much light you've used and how much shadow you've used here. Um, I think one thing, the color harmony of this, which is so warm in the post to, uh, compared to the mailbox, everything else is so cool in the painting. But It should still reflect like some gray and some gray blue from everything that's around it. And so that would keep it in harmony where you're not just bullseyeing right into this orange post. So you always want to keep um, your eye on how, th how color impacts each other. Everything that's next to one another, those colors reflect in and out. Um, I think I'm not sure you really needed this big stripe. In there, it's hard to know if it's a river or a road, but you want to sometimes, sometimes just ask yourself if is it necessary? Does it help the painting or not? Um, because this is so nice, you really don't probably even need that. Make it just simple in the background, but because this has got some nice prominence, I like that you made it so nice and big, and you know a, a nice little relationship between two sizes, and the leaning is fun. So otherwise. Good job, Al. Clarice, is Clarice here? Okay. So this is really, I feel, a very sweet little piece. Um, very moody. Um, sometimes it's surprising how, how sweet a tiny painting can be, as well as, you know, very large paintings that have a lot of impact. But this one is um, just really beautifully done. I feel like you can just move through it easily. There's no hang-ups in here as far as anything standing out that doesn't fit. And, you know, a great balance in color temperature. You know, a, a painting that is more in the cool family but has a strong sense of warmth to balance that out and also creates a great center of interest in that little area. Um, so I think just the blends, the softness is really good, but it also has some hard edges, some nice verticals that stand out a little bit and complement that, that simple way the atmosphere is created in here. So, I mean, that's just really well done. Fine, thin pieces in the back, you know, the close-up pieces that are a little stronger, beautiful, simple reflection, um, and... I think I just love the little textures in the grasses. Would you come up and look at it? It's just sweet little touches and they're delicate and just sensitively done. Ah, oh, that's what I wondered. Yeah, it's just a nice way to apply that little extra touch. You know, you go from something really broad, you know, broad masses down to medium sized strokes, down to small strokes, and then you get the teeny tiny additions in there and you just got the full gamut in a beautiful way. Yeah. 
Okay, Jim? Yes. Okay, there are Jim. Okay, so this piece um, I feel is, I really love the way this water is coming through here, the blend of color into the water. And I like that you made this little alcove, this little cut into the trees. I think you gave it some direction. Without that, I think it wouldn't have been as successful if you just had this line going straight across the whole way. But that really has helped a lot. Um, I think the foreground is, is played up really nicely too at the bank. And you know, the little uh, variation of darkness between all the trunks in here and just some nice little texture and of grasses and things. I think though on the top half, if I look at this, the top, it, it kind of flattens out. We have just, you know, pretty much one value if you squint up there. So I feel like it's hard to feel like you can go into the trees and into the forest because there's no big dark masses or change of value in there. And um, so it kind of leaves me a little bit like, oh, like it, you know, I'd like to go and feel like there's, you know, we can still keep going further and deeper into the woods, maybe up there. Um, uh, the trunks, I've, I think, I'd love if you can identify the trunks just with those little horizontal details, um, just like we really see on birch trees. Um, but they also sort of flatten out a little bit because they don't have any side shadows on any of them. So that could help just round the forms a little bit more. So maybe a couple of lines down here in that water. Because it's so smooth and you have all this texture and lines everywhere else, sometimes you want to repeat something that you did up here, down in here. You got the colors repeating and bouncing, but maybe a little bit of just like a little wave, a little movement, really subtle in the water would really be nice, I think, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's just really pretty colors, pretty harmony. Okay, is this Debs? Okay, so this has a nice feeling of just, um, you know, a fall scene. You just no doubt what season it is. And um, I think she really has a good play of balance of temperatures here. Fall scenes sometimes can be, sometimes they can be kind of disturbing because if they're just too hot and too much warm color, and uh, they need to be balanced out with some coolness just in the right way. And I think she really has done that. Um, these cooler colors like these darks, they help to balance out all these nice warmths that are around. Um, she has some good texture in the front. She hasn't gotten into too much little um, detail, but just suggestion of the woods and the, the little wild growth, I call it, or just, I always call it like, make a mess, make a mess in the front. So it seems like you make a mess and it looks more real and more natural. And I think that really feels like, like that. Um, I like that she has broken this line in a few places like here with a little bleed in from the background and a few of these little trees are sort of bleeding in too. So it has a little feeling of front and back, a little depth in here, but um, I feel like it could be more. She's got a couple of these um, almost um, goalpost kind of lines at both sides of the painting. It would be nice if one was really down farther or maybe moved in, one was thicker than the other. So kind of watch out for sameness on both sides of, of the painting. Um, so yeah, a few little things like that. They're little things, but there's so much good stuff here. I really love this opening in the trees. That's sometimes hard to plan and that, I just think that's great. And I also like that she pulling us in to this little sunny spot in the middle of the painting. So we have a good foreground, middle ground and background in this piece. And that's really, I think, well done. Yeah, it's really a pretty impression. Okay, 
this is Aruna. Um, so this this piece has definitely you know a whole different another temperature here going on icy and cold and you know kind of almost frigid feeling because of the little snowflakes and the ice crystals. So um, I just think it's kind of magical the way her colors have blended together from top to the middle to the bottom in that she really was brave to keep a nice dark in here that, that adds some depth into this painting and that that strong um, contrast between darks and lights uh, is really powerful to hold you up there um, also another good balance of the warm temperatures and the cool temperatures in here uh, really sweet the way she's you know the the coolness is is uh, dominant um, I think the only thing I'm I'm a little bit confused about this bottom half of the painting. Um, I'm not sure if it's a fence or a something looking out a window. I'm just not sure ab about that. The, the, but I do like that there's this soft, you know, all these striped dark lines could probably were very dark at one time and she's softened many of them sort of fuzz them away but left you know just different little pieces uh, to add interest so she's varied them up in a really good way um, even up in here even in this little stripe that goes across you know it's varied all the way across with lots of little icicles then a dark space with just a little then some more of the blue and different pieces breaking up through it so a lot of good design aspects she's using in this piece um, so and um, you know really even the disappearing of these branches up here but the the ones that show up just a little more just fine sweet little lines that are uh, just lovely Yeah, I think so. Okay. Is Tom, Tom here? Okay. Okay, so this is really an interesting abstract. And I really had to get up close to see that there was a lot more in here than I first thought there was. And so as I'm looking at it as an abstract and and design wise, um, I feel like there's really some really good movement of, I don't know, just the forms that are, there's a good rhythm working its way through this painting. And um, I feel like these, these few big pieces of light are catching a lot of attention to me. I keep looking at those pieces. But when I look up close in here and I see these fantastic heads that are coming out of that area, I feel like I really would like to look at those more and look at some of these less. Um, and I don't, you know, know what your intent was if you wanted them to be in the darkness more, but they're just so much fun to look at. So uh, sometimes if, you know, when these are taking so much attention, I feel like that would be like a center of interest area. And I think it's too, it would be too big of a center of interest. So I would either, you know, decide if this was it and knock these down a little duller, or if this one you wanted to keep because it would be close to these guys, then I'd knock these down a little bit. So sometimes you, you want to really see think about how the viewer is looking at it and where your intent is um, for them to look at and maybe that was your intent to surprise them when they move into the shadows but um, I like it as a design an abstract design very much and I think um, your values are, are great in here your bright colors are holding against the beautiful muted colors that wind through and even your your use of the line selectively that feels almost unfinished, but sort of a lead into 
areas where that line does complete the subject a little more. So it's, yeah, I, I think that feels really good. Marshall, Marshall here. Okay, so this little piece is, um, I think, just really well drawn and has a nice little feeling of uh, this this scene, kind of rural and dusty. Um, I think the drawing is really good and the values, and really, you know, pretty much the depth from front to the middle to the back. I do feel that um, maybe this little area that is between the figures is probably just a little bit busy. Um, it would be nice, I think, if there was less information between the two figures so that you could really see them kind of looking at each other, conversing, um, and just keep this really a simple part of the background back here. Yeah. Um, you know, I love, there's a lot of attention right here in, in contrast, but I feel like she's the center of interest still, even though this is high contrast, mostly because we go to a face in general to look, you know, when there's more detail in a face. It's got all this nice light around her too, but I think it would be even stronger if, um, if it was simpler inside of here. Maybe cooler, it's a little bit warm, and she's already, she's already surrounded by warmth. Um, I like that there's a good degree of um, depth from the foreground, you know, the busyness uh, of, of the walkway going in, you know, getting less busy in detail back here and really less back here too and in the, in the distance. So you really feel a nice sense of depth into this painting. So I think that's it. Is she okay? So, okay, so uh, Runa, I was saying on this one that, you know, this was a beautiful color selection for this icy, cold, sort of frigid day. And um, it's, uh, I think, just really beautifully handled with the sensitive little brushwork and icicles. Um, I love that you left this nice, dark, rich color to show some depth in and under these shrubs. Um, it's a great contrast to all this light around it, um, but especially against this nice, warm light above. It's a, it's a, a good balance of warm and cool temperatures in here. And um, I think this is sensitivity of the way you handled a few of these little trunks. Some just disappear so gently and just a few really nice selected pieces you hung on to. Um, I wasn't sure so much about uh, what was happening with this part. I couldn't tell if this was for sure if this was a fence or you're looking through a window or, or what, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I feel like as a design sense in this part of the painting, I love that in all these fence posts down here, um, how you varied the dark, the pronounce, pronouncement of the darks or, you know, some of them that are fading so nicely out here. And then you just pick up little dark elements here and there. And that some break through the lines, some, some just stop sharply. Um, and uh, the interruption of some of these lower little icicles that come up and break through that line. I think even in this line, I talked about, you know, the variation of the dark and the light and the soft edges that, and how the blue colors change and fade. Just sensitive, very nicely done. And I think 
all the elements that you really think about design, um, I think lots of them have been handled in here really well. So this even, I love this faded whole side. It's just a little that um, kind of holds you up here with the strength of the dark. Just good edges on everything. It's very nice. Okay. Oh, we're doing that one. Okay. So Leslie, it's Leslie. Okay. So uh, Leslie, I was thinking on this one. Um, I felt like there was a little too much of a divide on this painting between warm colors and the cool colors, and how the water really impacts the sand in color. So, you know, it's kind of like on your color wheel. When you put blue and yellow together, they make green. And this, this would, this yellow stand, you know, underwater is kind of brownish and yellowish. And, and when it mixes with the blue water, the scrum, it turns kind of greeny brown and greeny blue. So I feel like um, I'm not feeling the whole underwater scene as much as I love to because of that um, dis little disconnection of the color temperatures and uh, into each other. But I love the energy in the movement of all the fish and the shark, um, the forms that you, you've really paid attention to, all the forms, some loss and hard edges on them. Um, um, I think that I feel like the diver is a little bit flat and that it, it, when you're doing black, sometimes it's hard to see any highlight, but you have to create it, some highlight to give a little form. You just have, you, it seems like, you know, you have to push yourself to put it in, but, and it feels like, oh, it just doesn't fit. But once you get away from it and look at it, it really works. So a little extra blue highlight or something, a little gray from the sharks, you know, bouncing on him um, will help him to feel a little rounder. And I felt like this piece, the dark leg and the sand is too contrasty. Down in a place you don't want to send the viewer to look. Who cares about the leg, you know? So you, you want to pull those contrasts together. You know, darken the sand, lighten the leg a little bit, get a little soft edge. So it's there, it's a little moving, but it's not a tension getter. No hard edges on that. But otherwise, I feel like you, have, you keep the um, viewer where you want it right at the feeding right at the face so nice job okay all right Yep, I put it back on. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I remembered. I put it on the chair when I went out. Thank you, because I didn't think about it. You ready? Okay, I think we can begin. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is number 10, Gail. Yeah, is Gail here? Okay, Gail. All right, so this is a photo. And, um, you know, for the photo, I'm looking at it also as sort of an abstract design. And, you know, um, so I look at the variations of, you know, all the elements in here from the transition of the different tones that go across this painting, you know, the lights, the darks, the mediums, and the small single pieces versus the, the groupings. Um, so, you know, that's very interesting to me. And the variation of the lights uh, 
light, it looks like almost light filtering through this like blinds or something there. So you feel different degrees of the lightness coming through. Um, and so that little peep is kind of interesting, the light, the way it comes in and then plays on this floor at the same time. Um, I think I, I really like the way these patterns are changing from left to right in here and the little disruptions of texture. There's just one little space down here where you get a different zigzag of texture, which is which is kind of nice because it's different than anywhere else. Um, even in the you know pieces like this along the bottom where you have the wider piece of um, the warm light and then this little gray shape, you know they're both thicker than everything else into this area. So I, I think just little things like that, that little side triangular uh, pattern of shadow kind of mimics this triangle piece coming through. Um, but it's, it's kind of funny how um, I think there's sort of this, the angles, how they're changing along this wall, a little Willy Wonka and how, how it's coming through, the light's coming through at those different angles. What makes them change like that is interesting. So I think, you know, it's, it's a nice thing you captured, nice little piece you captured and uh, interesting light. Mm -hmm. Fran, is Fran here? Okay. Okay. So this little piece, um, is this um, a little watercolor piece? Yeah. I really think, um, I, I really love the, the blend of colors in this piece. I, it's, uh, it's so fresh. And the way it is just moving in and out of this whole piece without you know, any rough edges, um, I just think is beautiful. It looks like you tilted and turned your board to get it to just move and blend so easily um, from side to side. But it really provides such a great background for the pattern that you put in on top. And um, I was, you know, wondering about this pattern if you started with, you know, the lights first or your shadow piece, the dark piece first. but. It, it doesn't really matter. I feel like, oh, oh, cool. Okay. But I feel like, you know, I'm still always kind of looking a little for a center of interest. And I, and I feel like you have it sort of right here because everything comes together at this nice little knot. It's kind of like a knot, the dark, the light, and some nice little colors and some small little details in that area, which is, is good to have that. To, to focus on. But when you go to each corner of this painting, each section, you know, if you cover it over and you look at that bottom section, that's a beautiful little piece just by itself. And you cover over these other sections and you look at that upper right corner, that's a beautiful piece by itself. And this one, this painting looks good in every corner. And it's a good way to sometimes look at your paintings because you want these corners to feel different from each other and interesting. And sometimes you can, by doing that, you can see that maybe you've been too um, consistent with this, too much of the sameness of a stroke or a color or a shape. And you'll f can sometimes see that problem a little easier. But um, the, all the patterns in here are so interesting. They're beautiful. I don't feel like I could get bored looking at this for a very long time. It's pleasant, it's easy, it's flowing, and um, it's just delightful. I just love it. Yeah. Okay, Oliver? So, okay. Okay. So Oliver has this little nest. Um, this is oil. I'm uh, kind of surprised how many um, acrylic painters are in the group. So it was just interesting to see all the mediums everyone was using in here. 
So, um, so bird nests. I love bird nests. I paint a lot of bird nests. That's, I think they're just so much fun. Um, so, but I was almost just a little confused about the um, sort of this aerial view feeling of it. And I wasn't sure if it was on the ground or up in a tree looking down to the ground. So it was just a little confusing that part. And um, so that could probably have, um, if it was up in the tree and this was down below, this might be an area that you would blend out more blurry so it looked farther away. But otherwise, because it, it has a lot of the same attention and detail, it all feels like it's all in the same plane almost. Um, the nest, I feel like in a nest, some things you could still add to this, because it's easy with oils. It's just more sticks, long sticks, long things coming through here, back and forth, in and out, because these feel all a little bit short and um, kind of a lot of sameness to them, same thickness, um, no, no big thick ones or longer. So you want variation in a nest. I think that's the, the beauty of how they weave these sticks in and out. And then um, probably, you know, really to tuck these eggs down in the nest, you would want all these areas to be more shadowed. They're dark down there in that, you know, that nest. And they will have a little different shadows on some of them instead of just the blue. They'll have the brown from the inside of the nest. So shadow colors can be a little more varied too. But I think most of all, you want to feel like those eggs are down in that, almost like a bowl. And... Um, so um, some of these, so the edge, this light probably wouldn't just even exist down in there. Um, what else happens sometimes around the nest? Um, I love that you have a little more light here in the front. And, you know, it changes on the back side. But, um, yeah, I just think this little area is probably could use a little bit more variation and value in there. This I wasn't sure at first what this was. This is a sidewalk or now I'm just thinking now it's a wing, isn't it? Yes, it is. A wing. And I see I see this more. But at first I thought it was a little sidewalk. I wasn't sure. So now I know. This is, this is uh, incidentally, this started out with uh, something I saw on Facebook. Thomas gave advice to artists. He said an oval would be a good, um, makes a good composition. So I drew an oval on the cotton camp for this, and I said, now what do I do with this? <laughs> I looked out the window, and, and, and there actually was a uh, robin's nest. Uh, at that angle, we could look right outside our dining room window, and I looked down on it. So I, I put that in the uh, oval that uh, um, <laughs> well, good. You're listening there. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> oh. She's not here. Okay. Oh, this is Mary. Okay. So, um, I think this is a uh, digital art or photo. It's a photo. Photo. Yeah, Oh my goodness. Well, it's kind of amazing the different feelings you get out of looking at this. It could be so many things. You know, it, it could it could almost be like another planet. You know, it looks like the sun setting or um, a sun over the water. Um, yeah, something beachy. It, I think there's just a lot of imaginations gone wild when looking at this piece. Um, it's great that this, you know, it's a very warm picture, but it's it's so nice that, you know, she found and caught that bright little spot in where it is with the nice soft edges where it merges with everything else. So there's a ethereal kind of feel to it. Um, and all these textures that were in there is kind of amazing. This is a good one to just look at for design purposes for your own paintings, whether they were landscapes or something like that, because that variation 
could be a really great ground for for a, a landscape. So it's pretty cool that she saw that and recognized that as a, a very interesting design. It's, it is very captivating. Uh, so yeah, even this this nice this these horizontal pieces through here and the different colors they are are nice and you know texturized differently and then I love this zigzag extra dark piece in there as well. So yeah, it's a very cool piece. Is this Mary? Mary Haas? Is this Mary Haas? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, there she is. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think this is really, um, really beautiful, the way you've captured this evening light on here. Um, and I, it's it really works because I, I think of the sort of limited color palette that you've used. So it's easy to keep a harmony going throughout this painting. You know, you haven't, and there's nothing in here of color wise that doesn't belong. And so it really helps hold um, everything together. Um, this back light of the sun setting is, I love that it's just hitting of the tops of some of these shrubs to give them some form and bring them forward and um, the plants you know and this way the light is subtly filtered through the ground and into the figures just you know just nice and still um, holding on to the mood of this night sky um, even you know I like the depth the distance between the trees the front trees and then once going back and the further back ones and the far back ones how how much more they're impacted by the light and and now they're not green anymore now they're turning a little yellow and orange and red red brown it's really just glowing from behind that that strong sunset um, and those are really things that happen and um, it's it's fun to capture that and recognize when that happens um, I think the one thing that um, feels like it could have been handled a little bit better is probably in the clouds, especially on this side and this side. There's a lot of repetition in the same shape going across, you know, lots and lots of this same little shapes. And um, they take a lot of attention and, and they almost they're not they could be more fluffy in here just you now you've got a soft bottom pretty soft bottom on the bottom of this but not here now, usually you don't want to have hard tops and hard bottoms when you're having a cloud you want the bottoms to just be fluff and sort of floating away but really vary your tops big piece maybe some little ones and just let some of them fall away but you play those top edges and it's a design element in your painting one thing clouds do is like in any painting, if you've got a big blank sky and there's nothing there and it looks really plain, you can you can always put clouds in it. And with clouds, you can do about anything and use it as a design element in your painting. You, know, you can make them big and small, you know, hardly there, a little bit there. Or, but you have fun with brushwork and really learn what you can get away with, with designing interesting new shapes that you are fitting into the painting. So, um, yeah, I think it's really, it's busier. This could be a really almost one big piece instead of two layers and be easier to look at because you've got all this busy down here. So this would complement it being simpler at the top and beautiful with the lighting. Um, so I think that's probably the, you know, the only critical thing I would have 
to say that could could be adjusted a little bit on that. It's really nicely done, really. Nice knit. Yeah. <laughs> Got it? Is this Roger? Is Roger here? That was Roger. Okay. Well, if I had a poster like this, it, this would really make me stop and, and read it and look at it and intrigue me. You know, it's kind of amazing what just some sometimes color does and also, you know, the various type that you're using in something like this. It's so interesting and energetic and it's amazing what the impact is on color, the type, kind of type you're using and you know how you chose to um, highlight each of these different uh, words. Um, it's got energy in it, I think, especially when you do the girls and then the passion and then you got the straight letters. There's just a lot of great elements of design in here that would draw me in. I'm like, I want to see this movie or what's this story or something. And you know, with the compliments of, of blue and orange, it's just powerful having that together. Um, and, uh, you know, with the blue down here, you feel the night light, the night sky that's down here with the city buildings. And so that's intriguing and talking about the cities. I mean, um, the design of this and, of course, the way you, you put it in this little, this match, this little matchbox <laughs> is very cool, very interesting. But, um, yeah, I think you really know how to capture the audience in something like that. It looks, it's just exciting. It's really great. If anybody has any comments, any time. Okay. Blue and mushrooms. Bobby. So on this this little mushroom piece, I love the colors that you painted these mushrooms. They're, you know, you really that's how you feel when you see them in nature. Uh, these little browns and little aqua colors are so nice. Um, I do feel like we could layer them more with a little more depth into them. It's a little a little bit flat in here, like. Um, you know, these back ones are just as important as the front ones right now. So with a little more dimension, you know, you're focusing maybe on a smaller amount of these in here and then subdue some of these other ones a little bit more. Either dull down the colors, round the edges more so they go away from you instead of having hard edges around all the back sides. You know, um, when you want to create dimension on something round that back that back edge, you can really soften much more, kind of blur it out, and it will feel really round, more round. Um, so watch out for colors. You know, a lot of the, if you have, to see, this feels really just kind of flat because it's the same. These back edges are just a little too light. And, um, you know, there's a lot of equalness of attention all the way around it. So it just, it, that also will help it to feel flat. You have one little dark spot here, but not quite enough to round the form. So you kind of really want to look at that. Um, let's see, there's some good darks. I love the darks with it because it's so dramatic. Uh, but just be careful how much of the underside of the mushroom you want to see too. Do you want to see all of those pieces as light as that? Maybe just subdue them a little so that you stay on the top of, of the mushrooms and just see a little light poking through. But you did, you, you did really round these little pieces at the bottom. They do feel really round, those little ridges around the stem. So that's pretty nice, and the way this melts into the, the ground. Um, I think watch out for over here, Bobby. It's a lot of uh, the same color, same value. Um, you could really mix that up. So there's some darker, some lighter, maybe some brighter. Um, 
so so I have kind of the same attention all the way around. And then this hole, this little hole in here, probably darken and gray it down too. So it pushes back behind those guys. Um, so yeah, if they're, otherwise, yeah, it's a sweet little painting. And I love these colors. Uh, Jeff? Is Jeff here? Oh, this is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think, you know, there's something to just the simpleness of a palette, too, um, of black and white almost. It's not exactly black and white, but close. Um, where you can really control the impact and power in a subject by such high contrast, you know, something so dark and something so light. Um, but this gives me, this gives me all kinds of feelings like sci-fi and kind of monsters and worlds coming together. Like, was he thinking about this world and what is this world bombarding him? There's things in front of him, things behind him. There's this nice overlap of these big elements. And then the water, that's the power of the water and what's floating down there. Uh, and what's being born, you've got these little flies, butterflies or, and moths. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of energy into this piece. I think it's sort of wild, a little ferocious. Um, but so much interest, great textures going on in so many of these different things. And I feel like the monster, he's got his eyes glowing, so it's like the center of interest of him. You, you definitely go to him and stay with him more than every place else. And um, it draws you in to see what else is hiding in here. Um, and he really feels like he's just jumping and merging out of this water bit by bit. And it's intriguing. It's kind of scary. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's really a nicely done piece, really creative. It's a nice job, Jeff. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a dream kind of thing. Do you like digitally put all that stuff in? Yeah. Excuse me? It's all like digitally put into the picture? Yeah, and then oh, some cool. uh, uh, help knife. Wow, that's very cool. And James, Jim. So wow, this this is a complicated piece. Very nice. This is watercolor, Jim, right? Um, so. There's um, some different things with it. This this really drawn well, I think, through this whole city and um, with the bean in there, trying to get all these people in. Um, so I think there's, um, yeah, there is a lot of detail in here, lots and lots. I think sometimes when you have a big cityscape, uh, you want to really create um, an, an atmosphere of like distance in here from front to back and so i think that some of these far back buildings way back in here could almost be less detailed still and uh, a little cooler they get bluers are going back there in general even though this is sort of have this little warm light it, it maybe had that warm glow which would be okay but as long as the detail is still a little less in the buildings I think you always want to, this, in a landscape like this, you always want to look from top to bottom, side to side, and you want to see that things are changing. So when I look from this side to this side of the buildings, it's kind of a lot of the same detail. Not much color difference or transition of going away from you. Um, top and bottom, these values, about the same. This is a nice change here. Um, but there's a lot of sameness on the on the ground so i think like even on ground you might want to 
you know, you're trying to keep the viewer in, so not spread everything out equal from side to side. So you can play up the ground, even if it's lit solidly bright like that, you can direct the viewer like somehow find a way to bring shadows or something darker into a focal point. Maybe you want to select just a few people here for detail to be more prominent because right now they're all prominent. You want to look at everybody, but it, it's your job to be the designer in here and you know, bring a little uh, surprise or wander um, and, and direction on in. So, you know, over here too, you can, you can find ways to bring different shadows in through there or different colors. Just, you can just change up the colors uh, a little bit, the value to make it different. So I always think about that, this to this, let something change. If it's going away from you, maybe this will get, you know, a little cooler, a little bluer in the, on the street. Um, so this is pretty across the top. I think that's really nice. The bean looks great. And all your little people back here look great. Um, <laughs> well, it's always busy down there. You can take that. Well, yeah, it's, it's so, you know, even for people, you you want to be treating them differently. They're a big design element, too, where you put them, how you group them. you got a lot of twos, a lot of twos in here. There is a, some singles, but uh, there could be a crowd of three or four, too. And so they're a great way to, to design interest in the front so you don't get monotonous kind of thing. Trees handled really nicely across. I love the little lighted trees at the top over there. So that makes, you know, these two sides different that way. Those are nice things to pay attention to. Um, I have a so. Yeah. Has the building in the background to the view darker? No, lighter. Oh, lighter? Mm -hmm. What is that? Why is why, that? Why? Because, um, because... There's more air atmosphere between the front and far in the distance, and that air kind of takes color out, and um, it cools it off. You you have you see more blue and less color in anything far away. When things are up close, you see them more clear, more prominent. But when you put a lot of distance between, it gets less colorful, grayer more dulled down and usually bluer in the distance. I would just like to know what um, we feel is better of interest is that taking it? The bean, I guess, yes. The bean would be it. I mean... But yeah, definitely the bean. I mean, it's the biggest and the lightest piece in there. Um, yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? Or Jim, you have any questions? Yeah. All right. It's a big accomplishment. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice job, everybody. Um, it's really. Thank. You. Thank you for bringing your work. Nice job, Elaine. <laughs>